Hey everybody, Carolina Gun Guy here. Welcome back and thanks for watching my cheaply produced and questionably edited videos. Today I'm going to talk about my AR-47 that I put together using an Anderson Manufacturing Stripped Lower, a Palmetto State Armory Lower Parts Kit with a Magpul Grip and Stock, and a complete Bear Creek Arsenal Upper in 7.62x39. I was really excited to put this together in 2020 for just about $400. I've broken down the cost over here so that you can see what I paid. And yes, I have a cheap Penti red dot on top. I plan to do a separate video about this, but my overall impression of the red dot is... <laughs> that's my official stance on it, and I'll get a review up on it soon. When I first built this, I took it out to the range, and I was almost immediately disappointed. I had trouble getting this thing into battery, getting more than one shot off at a time, or getting rounds to fire at all. I did get three shots off in a row at one point like you just saw, but that was the most I got for the day. So with my head hung low, I brought it back home to work on it and figure this thing out. This is a good spot to pause and tell you about Chris Lyles from South Carolina Gun School. If not for Chris, I wouldn't be able to make half the content that I make. He has a YouTube channel, so do me a favor and go over there and hit that subscribe button. I'll put the link in the description below. You can also go to scgunschool.com to take a look at the classes he has to offer. And if you're local to Greenville, South Carolina, maybe you can sign up for some of his classes. Please do me a favor and help support him so that I can keep making these videos. Thank you, guys. I am using steel-cased ammo in my AR-47. I picked up a thousand rounds of the Wolf Military Classic stuff early in the pandemic for about $270 shipped, so I have plenty of it to go through. If you do any amount of research into AR-47 type guns, you'll see that a common problem with using steel-cased ammo is light primer strikes. Two of the ways to correct this issue are by using a heavier hammer spring and by using an enhanced firing pin. So I ordered both of these from Black Rifle Arms, and they cost me a total of $20.63 with tax and shipping factored in. So back to the range I went on a much colder day, and oops, let me pick that up. So back to the range I went, and yes, I was still having some trouble with getting a good strike on the steel cased ammo and getting it into battery for a little bit. But it appears that that was just a temporary issue, because it wasn't long before I was able to start getting consistent shots off. I was still having issues when I tried to shoot with a full magazine. For whatever reason, I find that shooting with a 30 round magazine loaded with no more than 20 rounds and a 10 round magazine loaded with no more than 8 rounds worked best for me in this setup. If you're wondering what type of magazines I'm using, I have a few of the ASC 10 round 7.62x39 mags, and I have one of the C Products Duramag 30 round magazines, and I'm sure you guys will probably recommend different ones, and that's fine. This is what I had available to me. I wish I could afford to go buy every type of magazine to test, but I can't, so if you guys have a better one to recommend, please let me know in the comments. Is this a gun that I'll use for home defense? No, never. That's what 50 BMGs are for. Is this a gun that I can let my 8-year-old shoot in the backyard? No, probably not. But is this a gun that I can ask easy questions about so I can answer them on video? Absolutely! But in all seriousness, times are tough and ammo is expensive. With 223 ammo running about 60 to 70 cents a round if you can find it, shooting 762 by 39 at the 27 cents a round that I paid is a lot more satisfying than emptying my wallet on the good stuff. For what I paid, I'm happy with this little range toy. I recognize that it has some issues that I still need to work out, and I'll be honest, I'm not exactly sure where the issues lie. Is it the magazines? Do I need a different firing pin or hammer spring? Should the whole BCG be swapped out? I don't know. If you've had any similar issues on an AR-47 and you figured them out, please let me know in the comments. A big part of why I do these videos is to learn from others. I've never claimed to be an expert, and we are all in this together, so I love the firearms community and us being able to come together and teach each other and help each other out. Thanks for watching, God bless, and I'll see you next time.